When it comes to imports, there are a few common niggles that we see crop up again and again. So we'll just go through a couple of those. So by far the most common issue is that you set up the import, you go to run it and it times out. Uh, you might get an error or in the logs, it might show us paused halfway through or Sometimes if we can, we show an alert up here to give you some more information about it. The issue is that on servers, the default timeout is 30 seconds and some of the imports will take more than 30 seconds, especially if you're either importing a lot of properties or if you're running it for the first time because we only import photos and floor plans of media the first time of importing a property. So the first time you run through it, it takes a lot longer. That's why you might hit these timeout issues. Now you've got a few options regarding this. By far the best is to change the setting on the server and the settings normally a PHP one called max execution time. It's 30 seconds by default. What to set it to is a hard one to say because it depends on how many properties there are but essentially you could increase it massively and then like I say it's only the first time of running it's going to take a while to run so you could then bring it down gradually after that. The other thing you could do is if you don't have the ability to change that setting because maybe you're on shared hosting or your hoster doesn't allow it. It's a bit more time consuming but what you can do to get around this first import is you can run it now wait for it to get as far as it can and then just keep running now and what that will do that will get a bit further every time until all the properties are imported because once they're all imported subsequent imports should take a matter of seconds if that again depending on the number of properties but changing that server setting the max execution time one is definitely by far the best even if it's just temporarily just for the first import another common issue we see is that the automated script isn't running so it's not running automatically even though you set it up to be automatic again this is a hard one to debug but the best way to do it is to use a plugin and check the automated task is scheduled so the best thing to do is plugins add new and there's many of them around but one we like to use is wp control and once installed and activated, what you can then do is under tools, cron events. This will give you a list of all the automated tasks which are scheduled to run. So firstly, I'm checking that the import one is in here. So if I'm going down, I can see it there, property import. The other thing I'm checking is for any errors. Now immediately I'm seeing here, there's a there's an error about curl, not being able to spawn the, the cron system. So in this scenario, it's a hosting thing. The hosting or hoster has blocked curl from executing or something to do with hosts. Uh, it's, it's case by case basis. But in this scenario, if you see an error, it's best to speak to your hoster. If the WordPress automatic cron scheduling isn't working, again, you've got a few options. One is in WP config, there's a setting called alternative cron, which you can set in WP config, and that will just execute them in a different method. Or you can set up a Linux cron job. Again, this if you're not sure, probably best to speak to your hosting company, but that just means it doesn't rely on WordPress to execute the cron jobs and lets Linux handle it, which is a more guaranteed way of them running and running on time as well. Another thing to do if imports are failing is to check the logs. The logs will hopefully contain any errors such as like incorrect FTP details, if it failed to access a URL, anything like that. So the logs can sometimes give insight into what the issue might be. And lastly, maybe check the details yourself. So in some scenarios you won't be able to do this, but in others you will. So in the Dupix case, for example, they will give you a URL. Uh, if it's not working, the first thing you can do is check the URL yourself by just viewing it in a browser. Some formats give you FTP details, in which case you could try them FTP details yourself to validate they do indeed work. There are some scenarios where you won't be able to test it, in which case I would just make sure that if you copied them from somewhere or you're entering them manually, just make sure there's no spaces on the end and just make sure the details are in the right order. So for example, the Vibra one has username, password and data feed ID. Just make sure they've been entered into the right fields because they can look quite similar.